got your Bible, Exodus chapter 3 and verse number 1. Exodus 3 and 1. Hallelujah, hallelujah, God is good. I'm looking forward to that day when that old gospel ship comes sailing in. And, amen. You know, I, I'll never forget, I was on a, on a cruise one time. And uh, I, it was my umpteenth anniversary. And uh, we went on a, on a big old Western Caribbean cruise for seven days. And we had a real exciting cruise director. And he said, if you ever want the greatest picture of the ship, there is nothing more beautiful than to see it sail off from port as you're standing on the dock. Y'all, you don't want to see the old gospel ship take off without you being on it. You want to make sure you're on board. Amen? I, 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 you know, it's not going to look like the Nina, the Pinta, the Santa Maria. It's not going to even look like the Starship Enterprise. It's, going to, you know, it, it, it's not a real ship. We're going to take a plane air ride. But, but yeah, I like the old song. It's a pretty good song. But I, I, I tell you what, I don't want to see any of you go ahead. I want to go right on with you. Amen? Hallelujah. Unless you die early and, go and you rise to meet him in the sky, all that good stuff. But uh, uh, if, we, if, if it's rapture time and the old trumpet sounds from Zion, I, I, I want to shoulder to shoulder, just zip on out of here together. I don't want to, I, I don't want to wonder. And I don't, you know what? Because there's only one trip. You can watch and read every left behind book you want to. But if you miss it, you miss it. There's only one book. And this is the book. Left Behind is entertaining. There's nothing wrong with it. I'd rather you watch that just as long as you don't get a bunch of false doctrine in your head than watch some old junk that you might see on TV somewhere else. Hallelujah. Exodus chapter 3 and verse 1. Now Noah... No, no not Noah. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian... And he led the flock to the backside of the desert. And he came to the mountain of God, even to Horeb. And the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burnt. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and Mo said, Moses, Moses. And he said, Here am I. And he said, Draw nigh, draw not nigh hither. Put off thy shoes from off thy feet, for the place whereon thou standest is holy ground. Moreover, he said, I am the God of thy father, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. And Moses hid his face, for he was afraid to look upon God. Let's pray. Father, we thank you, Lord Jesus. I ask you to help me tonight, Lord, move in this place, anoint us and teach us and help us in Jesus' name. And everybody said, Amen. You may be seated tonight. What an awesome, awesome thing. I mean, this dude got to see a bush on fire and it was not consumed. I mean, that's pretty cool. That's a special fire. I, I, I don't think it was a special bush. I believe it was a special fire. I believe it was the fire of the Holy Ghost burning. Uh, I believe it was, it was trying to light somebody on fire. But the Bible says, Moses, put off your shoes. For the place where thou standest is... Holy ground. I want to talk to you tonight about a holy connection. Now, I may not preach very long tonight, so y'all want to listen quick. I, 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 I don't know, I, I'm just, I've got something on my heart, a burden. I, I pretty much read all my scriptures to you. That's pretty much it. I got one, two other scriptures that I'm going to uh, work on here in a minute, but not a whole lot. So you might want to listen quick. This might be a night you get to bed early on a Wednesday night. That'd be all right. So, but, but he said, take off thy shoes, for the place where thou standest is holy ground. Now, I, I got to thinking about something, and I remember one of my first trips out west. I stopped somewhere 
in Arizona because I saw out in the field a little bush with a flower on it. I've still got the picture. And I walked out there and took a picture of that bush, a little cactus or something. I didn't step on a cactus. And I got back to my car and there was all kind of stuff stuck to my shoes. Because it was, everything out there had thorns on it. How many of y'all would like to run barefoot out, kind of just take off somewhere, just take off running around here, out here? That you don't know where you're at, and just kind of just jump out of the truck and run, you know, run out across the field somewhere. You, you could probably get a few things stuck in the bottom of your foot. Am I right? You know, I grew up in a world where, look, y'all don't understand it. If, you, if you've never done it, you don't even understand it. You, you, you can't comprehend it. But to walk out on a cool dead of winter morning, you know, it's like 60 degrees. And there is some, you, you, you got that gorgeous St. Augustine grass. And it, it's, it's not been freshly cut, but it's got a nice about two inch good stand on it. And it's got some dew on it. And you're barefooted. You walk out across that grass and that little bit of dew on that. Man, that, that feels good. Y'all don't understand. Just saying. But that was not the condition where Moses was. It was more like some of our neighborhoods out in here and there. And, but that ground was holy. And what that means is it was clean of anything that would hurt his feet. There was no briars. There was no stones. Nobody had been out there drinking beer and busting beer bottles. It was not going to harm him to take his shoes off and stand on that ground. And there is something that happens in this picture once we recognize that this is holy ground. There is a holy connection when we walk in a holy lifestyle before a holy God. Now, somebody called me today and they didn't know they were confirming what I was feeling in my soul that I was going to preach a little bit tonight. But we want a closer walk. Anybody want a closer walk with God? Raise your hand. Anybody want God to do more things in your life? I, I do. I, I, want to, I want to help us a little bit. You see, last night we were teaching in James, and it refers to the law of liberty. It refers to the royal law, the Mosaic law, and the law of liberty. The law of liberty is the apostolic law. That's the New, church, New Testament church law. What is it? Well, I'm glad you asked. The law of liberty is a law for a citizen, not for a slave. What does that mean, Brother Dunn? Well, the Bible says, uh, Paul referred to the law of Moses as a taskmaster. You must do this or squat. I mean, how many of y'all feel much freedom in that? Not me. The apostolic law, the law of liberty says that you're a citizen and God's going to give you some common sense on how to live for Him. The Lord said, Be ye holy, for I am holy. Noah uh, not <laughs> was a great man that built an ark. You thought you messed me up. No. <laughs> Moses... I mean, I was just about to say Moses, and he said, no, and I just, <laughs> it's all good. Moses had never experienced holiness before. You see, everywhere that he had walked, he had to have some soles of his shoes on his feet to keep him from being injured. He had to have a separation. But God wanted to move on that man. And he said, I want to let you feel holiness, and have contact with true holiness. And God had a clean spot. God had a pure place. 
You see, we build up things between us and this world. Because this world is full of problems. And as a citizen of the Most High God, our need is not to protect us from God. Our need is to protect us from the world. Boy, that's a whole message right there. But I'll keep going. You see, in order for us to have a closeness with God, we've got to make sure that we're not building up a protective layer for corruption against God. See, you come to church sometimes. I'll pick on Sister V. Hill. No, I won't. She don't need to be picked on tonight. Sister Amaya, I'll pick on you. Just because you're sitting across from Sister V. Hill. But, uh, you know, Sister Amaya comes to church sometimes. And she's got her mind on God and the Holy Ghost begins to move. And, and she just feels it. Just, whew! Other times she comes in and... She just sits there. Because what's happened is, is we build up through a lack of holiness in our lifestyle, a separation. We build up a soul on our shoe. We, we build up this, this separation between us and God. When it should be a separation between us and the world that we build. Now, Brother Dunn, you're saying that we should have the law of liberty where we can feel after God and know right from wrong and determine. And I used this example last night. The law of Moses is like this. Main Street. Main Street has these little white signs with black letters that I don't like. And they will tell you that the speed limit is 35 miles an hour. Because some engineer that don't know as much as I do went out there and graded that road. That's the first step. If you live on a road full of potholes, you know why it says 15 miles an hour? Because you can't drive 35, 40, 50, 60 miles an hour on that road because you'll end up in the ditch. There ain't nobody out here. Drive from here to the, uh, 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 out there toward Brother Peshekai's place. There's a section that road unless they fix it. Oh my goodness, if you're going very fast, it'll just like throw you all over the place. If you drove very much around the world, man, you hit some places like that. Most of them are in Louisiana, but the rest are, there's a few elsewhere. But the road is graded and it says you could drive, this is a safe speed. But then it also looks at all the other intersections. It looks at all of the things around the road. It looks at the pedestrian level on the road. And he says, the only safe speed on this road for all of the things involved is 35 miles an hour. Now, you know as well as I do, that road's a pretty good road. And about 2 o'clock in the morning, it's hard not to just punch it and roll when the red lights are green. Y'all with me on that? But... All of the other things involved makes a safe speed. Now, the Mosaic Law is that sign, speed limit, 35 miles an hour. And we're going to give you a ticket. We're going to stone your children if they go out of, if they talk back to their parents. We're going we're gonna to do this. And we go, boy, that old law was tough. It was not free citizenship. You were born into it. You were, for all practical purposes, a slave to the law. But the Lord came and gave us the law of liberty or the law of citizenship. And what we do with the law of citizenship is there's no speed limit sign. But as you drive down that road, because you are sensitive to the Holy Ghost, you recognize that it's safe to drive a safe speed. In Florida, up and down the intercoastal, if you go through an area, it has a, what's called a no-wake zone. In other words, you're not allowed to send a wake behind your boat. That will either, you know, manatee zone, you're not allowed to kill the manatees. And then when you get to the other side, it'll say, resume normal, safe operation. In other words, you know how fast you can properly handle your boat in these waters. Now, 
If you're seeking the perfect law of liberty, you're going to consider the pedestrians, you're going to consider the quality of the road, you're going to consider the surroundings, and you're going to end up coming up with the safe speed of 35 miles an hour. Why? Because that's the safe speed. You've got to consider the things around you. And the perfect law of liberty says, I am a citizen by free choice, and there are good things for me to do, and there are things that are not good for me to do. Paul said in the book of Romans, he said that those without the law, seeking after God, end up doing the things that are in the law. Ain't that awesome? You see, if you were a Jew, they had this little thing called circumcision, that if you had this circumcision, you were under the law. Like it or lump it, back up and bump it, that's the way it is. You were under the law. But the law of liberty says, I'm a citizen. I choose to be a Christian. I choose to live for God. And God, I'm going to, my goal is to safely get to the promised land. My goal is to safely hear the Lord say, Well done, thou good and faithful servant. And I'm going to live my life to get between here and glory. And, and my goal is my neighbor. Jesus said, What? These two laws, the royal law that James refers to, is the one that Jesus said. Step number one, the great commandment. Love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, thy soul, thy mind, and thy strength. And the second is like unto the first. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Now, in my love for him, I want to go be with him. Right? In my love for my neighbor, I'm going to live a life that is compelling to get her to go with me i got to be an example before these young people and some of the older ones. Because if I don't consider those things around me, I'm not being a good citizen. I need somebody to tell me how to be a good citizen. I need someone to force me because I'm not doing it on my own. You know what? Everybody's going to make a mistake. One of these days, one of these days, it might be a long time from now, but you might hurt somebody's feelings. It's possible. It's possible. You know how easy it is to fix it? If you're a citizen, you go back and apologize. Not because you have to, but because you want to. Holiness is in the perfect law of liberty. The things that I receive into my life to protect me and those around me. Holiness keeps me in the vein of God's anointing. Sometimes you come into church, I started on this while ago, Sister Maya comes into church every now and then, and she just don't feel anything. Well, all day long, I, I know she don't ever do this, but all day long, she's been watching Beyonce videos on, on, the, t on the TV all day long. And all day long, She's been, you know, back-talking her mama. I know she never does that. All day long, she's been throwing tomatoes at, at her papa's truck. All day long, she's been out there baptizing the chickens until the bubbles stop coming up. And she wonders why she don't feel anything in church tonight. Now, I'm stretching it. I, I'm just having a little fun with that. But you see, holiness says, I need to get something right out of the way between me and God. Now, I, I'm, I'm, I, I used to, man, I, I love, there's some things in this world I love. Just me, I'm flesh. I'll tell you something. There, there was a day that it, man, rodeo or church? Rodeo or church? Rodeo. There was a day, man, I'll tell you what. I, I love, I love rock and roll music. Man, get them, get them guitars going. Whoo, dog, I enjoy that. They don't need to sing. Just shut up. Y'all can't sing anyway. Just let me listen to music. Man, I'm a headbanger. I, I love that stuff. But, you know, let me tell you something. I know, 
I find something that it, it, it divides me from the holiness of God. I can't, I can't rock and roll all night and party every day and come into church on Sunday morning and feel the presence of God. Because I've put a soul or I put a, a shield of unholiness between me and God. And I've got to pray through that thing before I can ever get anywhere. How many of y'all, we came off the fast the other day. That first, check that out, my watch is broke. Man, I have to buy me another one. Oh well. Or another band one. But, uh, y'all wasn't going to tell me about that, was you? Oh, y'all done seen that. Nobody said a word. I about tripped on it. Man, wouldn't it have been horrible if I stepped on my watch? Thanks a lot. No, I'm joking. Okay. But, you know, we need to get into a place and a lifestyle that removes unholiness from our life. You know, there are some things... You, you realize the circus is not an unholy place unless you make it your lifestyle? But if you've been to the circus and you can't worship God and you don't feel the presence of God, that might need to be your last trip. Now, I'm, nothing wrong with the circus. I just told you that. But you know something? The enemy will find places in your mind to work on you. You don't need to let him work on you. You need to find a separation between you and the world. i got a scripture right here. I think it's time for that scripture. Exodus chapter 15. Who is like unto thee, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like unto thee, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? Now if God said, walk before me and be thou holy as I am holy, if we want God to work wonders in our life, we need to be able to feel Him. There was an old scripture in the Old Testament. I use this for an example. The Old Testament had a scripture that told the children of Israel to not, they were not allowed to come before God or before the mountain of God. I mean, they, there's a huge mountain. Moses is up on the mountain getting the, getting the word from God. And God says, you tell the people to break off the earrings and take off the jewelry lest I come down and slay them. Now, they weren't allowed to come before God because God felt that was an unholy affliction. Because it praises you. Because it beautifies you. Because it makes, lifts you up. Now, we're not preaching against jewelry tonight. I'll preach against that another night. But I'm using it for an example. But if we are supposed to be full of the Holy Ghost on the inside, all the time, we're not like the Jews who come see Him once a year. We can call on His name every day. And He'll come alive within us. He'll move in us at any time. But if there were things that He felt divided the people from Him, that they weren't supposed... He couldn't properly minister to the people. He couldn't deal with their sins. He couldn't heal their sicknesses as long as they were abiding in unholiness. How do we live for God carrying things that separate us from God? Man, we got the earbuds in and we listen to Michael Jackson. Woo! With a few, you know, about 20 octaves higher than that. But, uh, you know, we got all that stuff going on and all of a sudden we need God. We've got to fight through all of that layer after layer after layer of stuff that we have built up before we can get God to step in on the scene. You know why people stopped living for God? They came to church, they felt great things, great things happened, moving, hallelujah, glory to God, amen. And then all of a sudden, they began, well, you know, we just ain't even having a good church around here anymore. Well, 14 people just got the Holy Ghost. Where were you? It's because there is a buildup in our spirits that is unholy. It don't mean you a bad person. You come to church, it don't mean you've been, you know... But that constant barrage 
of whatever the latest TV show series is out there that promotes ungodliness and homosexuality and all kind of uh, adultery, sleeping around and all that nonsense, whatever the current thing is out there that you're filling your mind with, you may not be participating, but you're filling your mind with iniquity that separates you from God. That's what iniquity is, by the way. It's not a transgression of your hand. It's something going on in your brain. Sit around all day long. I know Josh did that to me. I know I knew it was Josh. I hate that guy. I just like to smack him upside the head. I just and you just eat on that all day long and walk in here and try to oh hallelujah oh oh hall I I love you G God I'm glad I wish Brother Dunn hurt me sit down. That's what happens. That's unholiness. That's not the way God is. You know, I mean, I, I tell you something. I, I don't care if anybody sees or not, whatever. I just tell, I, I'm proud to say it. God, God talked to me the other day. God talks to me a good bit. And I know it when it's Him. But I was sitting there and I was, I was praying for my kids and loving God and got to see some, my daughter singing and praise the Lord, hallelujah. And all of a sudden, Brother Carpenter's son was called to the platform. And when he stood behind the pulpit, God said, when's the last time you prayed for Nolan? That's a good question. I used to take that little boy out, me and my boys and him. We'd go out and hit golf balls and have, do, you know, just, just have a good time. When they were just little bitty kids, four, five, six years old. Boy, God hit me right between the eyes. When's the last time you prayed for him? Huh. You know, there have been reasons it's hard to think about praying for some people. Anybody got reasons it's hard for you to think about praying for people? You know what? That divides you because God so loved the world. He didn't divide. He, everybody died. He died for everybody. But if there's some people that's got your crow, it didn't finish there. So I'm standing here the next morning praying. Lord, touch Brother Nolan, Lord. I, just like I pray for my son. God, bless him. God, use him, Lord. Do a work in his life. Call him to preach. Hallelujah. Amen. Touch Joel. God, use him. Call him. Work with him. God, anoint him, Lord Jesus. Touch Jesse. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Touch Cassandra. Amen. Lord says, when's the last time you... Whatever that boy's name is. I never have seen that kid. I don't even know what his name is. Um, hang on. Oh boy, whatever. Yeah. Some other kid. When's the last time you prayed for him? Now, Sister Graham, I, I had to swallow hard on this one. I, I'm not going to lie to you. I, I had to swallow hard on this one. But the Lord convicted me. I, had a, I, I couldn't pray for that child without God t t touching my heart and, and dealing with me. That kid ain't ever done nothing to me. What is his name? Oh well, Lord knows. But... But you know who it was? That's my ex-wife's son that she had with this other dude that she was doing her thing with. Really? I ain't even ever seen the kid. God, didn't I pray enough for him before he was born? You woke me up in the middle of the night, said you were going to take vengeance for me, and you were going to slay that son. And I begged you not to. Isn't that enough? I said, God, please don't. It's not fair. It's not right that that man or anybody should suffer the loss of a child like that. All right, son. If you want it? You, that's what you asked. I'll do it. I didn't know she was pregnant. God woke me up in the middle of the night and told me. Wasn't that enough? No. Tim, I don't care what... This is God talking to me here. I don't care what Dwayne has ever done to you. And he might be heading straight into a lake of fire because he ain't changed his ways. But he prays for your kids every morning. That was a bitter pill to swallow. You know what it is? There were some things between that I had shields before. I couldn't, I couldn't have the love of Christ. I, I couldn't feel the love of God. For that boy, why? Because I had some unholiness in my spirit. I had some iniquity within me. We've got to be careful to watch out for things that are unholy in our life because when God is trying to speak to us and we can't feel Him, we're failing Him. 
And when we can't feel Him, we grow cold. When we grow cold, we fall away. I don't want to fall away from God. I'm telling you what, we've got to have it upon our heart to pray for the lost, to love everybody, to, to want to go to heaven with everybody. Not just that, but the walk, the lifestyle that I walk, I want people to be drawn to God by my lifestyle. Not because somebody made me do it, but because I chose to do it. Now, Brother Josh, would you read, just start verse 2 and 3. This is Titus chapter 2 and 2, verses 2 and 3. Whatever. Go ahead. Go ahead. Real loud. That the aged men be sober, great, temperament. Back up. Go give me verse 1 2. I'm so sorry. I figured that was going to happen. But speak the other things which become sound doctrine. Alright. Speak the things that become sound doctrine. Everybody says doctrines, baptism, Jesus' name, filled with the Holy Ghost, uh, 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 speaking in other tongues, live a holy and upright life, believe in the Lord uh, God with all your heart, mind, soul. That is doctrine. But these things become sound doctrine too. Go ahead. That the aged man be sober, grave, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and patience. Okay. You old men, if you're over the age of 12, you're an old man. Sober. G give me that list again. Temperate. Okay. Go ahead. Be sober, grave, temperate, temperate, sound in faith, and charity, and patience. That's what you're supposed to be. I'm supposed to be that. I'm supposed to have a mellow spirit. Why? Because it becomes sound doctrine. Why does it come become sound doctrine? Because, Sister Mary, you see the way I live, and your grandsons see the way I live, and they see the way you live, and if you're going with Jesus, you need to have this spirit within you because it attracts and leads others. Amen. Go ahead, read verse next. Go on. That, that's the old ladies. Go ahead. You may be seated. Ladies, if you're over the age of 12... There's no real age here. I've just made that up, okay? <laughs> People are watching you. Since you, you three girls sitting there in school, people are watching you. Are you walking according to these things? Somebody needs to tell you some things that will help. Brother Dunn, living for you, get up, preach about holiness. You teach our women not to cut their hair and trim the bangs and all that kind of stuff. You teach us not to wear jewelry, wear dress like ladies. Somebody needs to teach. But you know what? God's not sitting there. Hang on, let me digging it out. I'm trying. The angel of the Lord is not sitting there. Just imagine it's a big sword. With a sword, what do you do? Wipe you out. He's trying to get you to walk after God. Yes, somebody needs to teach. But God's not trying to kill you and stone you and cut you down. But uh, God is trying to tell you that what you will do is you will start putting up a buffer so strong that you won't feel God. These things, read verse 3 again real loud. All right, there. Be in behavior as becometh holiness. There is things that we have to deal with these days that my grandfather didn't have to deal with. But can I tell you a secret? We have to deal with things massively different than what the Apostle Paul had to deal with. Can I tell you something? I don't know if you, if you believe this or not, but Brother Ryan... The Bible doesn't tell you that it's wrong to buy a Playboy magazine. Yeah. <laughs> but does anybody think that that's a good idea? Do you think God is approving of that? Or do you think that life, that action can separate you from God? Go fill your mind up. Oh, that's just Sports Illustrated swimsuit issue. Fill your mind up with that and come to church. See how close you feel God. I know I'm preaching hard tonight. This is tough. 
I, I, I just want to get you to heaven. I, I just, I, I, I want, I love, I love you and I want, and I know God loves you and I want you to go to heaven with me. Look, I may, I may start on a series on teaching on holiness in the next few weeks. I don't know if I will or not, if God moves on me to do it, but, but I kind of feel it right now as I'm preaching. I feel, but, this, but the Lord just touched my heart and said, we've got too many things that are between us and Him and we can't feel the charge of the power of the Holy Ghost like we need to. Let me tell you something. We need to pray through. We need to pray through. We do not need to have our senses of the Holy Ghost dulled by the conditions of our lifestyle. But Don, you saying we can't have fun? Oh, no. Ain't nobody like having fun more than me. Really. Nobody. I like having fun. But I know there are some kinds of fun that God can't have with me. Last night, I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to get that girl to get back in church. I went last night and I had chicken wings over at Zebra's. Usually, and she told me these, there's a couple nights a week that there's just nothing going on there. It's quiet. Just come on in and eat. And if you're out by 9 o'clock, there ain't nothing going on. And so I got over there and I eat my chicken wings. And they started a, a, a trivia contest. You know, just general knowledge. And I'm, I'm, I'm just, well, you know, listen to a few of the questions. You know, I didn't join the team and I didn't play. I'm just kind of sitting back by myself and... Uh, so, you know, I enjoy that a little bit, you know. All of a sudden, a string of words come out of his mouth about some, uh, it wasn't general knowledge because if you ain't married, you ought not have this kind of knowledge. Needless to say, I was finished. Meals paid for, I'm out the door. Did I, did I participate in something sinful? No, but if I'd have hung out there, I'm not paying attention to my witness. I'm letting my ears become full of things that don't need to be in them. I was, in, I was somewhere today, and I've been another young lady, at, uh, and, and, men, and a, there's two boys and a, a girl that works down here at, at the mail store. Maritza and the other two guys, I don't know their name. But I work on a man. Y'all come to church. I almost got her here a while back, uh, Easter Sunday. She almost came. Didn't go to, don't, didn't, never went to church. Don't know anything about church. Don't like church. Don't want to like church. But she almost came. Man, I was in there, sending a box, packing it up, and they had some, you know, something music going on, whatever. And, uh, and oh boy, it was packing up my box. All of a sudden, he looked kind of funny. And there come a word across that sound system, and I didn't, I didn't say anything. He turned white. I don't know if she turned white or not, because she's in the back. But she dove for the radio. Kabloom! Preachers in the house! I don't want none of that stuff going on. Let me tell you something. It don't take a rocket scientist to know some things that will separate you from God. Amen? If you're in the law of liberty, you're observing your life. I had that phone call today. It's none of your business who called me. But there are, there are activities that your kids are going to get involved in. Ain't nothing wrong with it. You know, we're going to do Kids Fest. Ain't nothing wrong with going to Kids Fest. You want to go to college? Ain't nothing wrong with going to college. You want to, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you want to, whatever you want to do until it starts separating you from God. That's when you make up your mind. Either I can't feel God anymore. You know, you, you, just, just, just a, a, a thing that's kind of stupid. Don't ever go to college and study ancient religions. You know why? Why? Because just the same reason that God told you not to study, God told in the Old Testament not to read up on what they worship and how they worship. Because it'll cause your heart to get crusty. It'll start putting things in your mind that ain't right. And it'll separate you from God. And you won't be able to feel God. You'll feel other things. You know what? You've got to stay close to God. The only way to stay close to God is to live holy. There is some holiness, some things that become holiness. And it helps. And it'll keep you close to God. Amen? Amen. Ain't God good? Amen. Hallelujah. What time is it? Oh, that's in my pocket. That's why. Okay. Let's see here. What time is it? Did I do a good job? 8.30? Not bad. It, well, mine says 8.29. So yours is strong by three minutes, but that's okay. <laughs> anyway, God is good. Stay close to God. When you come into church on Sunday mornings, 
Wednesday nights, Sunday nights. You need to work on getting rid of that so you can feel. That's why we have prayer before church. That's why we try to have prayer before church. You need to be praying before you come to church. That's why we have morning prayer. That's why we have ladies' prayer. Friday morning, 6.30, men's prayer here at the sanctuary. Come on up. Come pray for a little while. You can't stay but five minutes. Come stay five minutes. You can't stay but an hour and a half. You're welcome to stay an hour and a half. I, just come and pray. You talk to God and watch, watch what happens. You will begin to remove that separation between you and God. God can start healing your body. God can start blessing your life. I'm going to tell you what. You would, not, you, you would not believe what happens when there is no division of unholiness between you and God. All of a sudden, you say it, God just does it. Why? Because you don't have to fight through the big old shoe leather between you and God. Amen? Take off your shoes for the place you stand is on holy ground. Once you stand, let's worship God before you're dismissed. Lord, we thank you for your word tonight.